When I interviewed at Colorado State, I really enjoyed uh, two things. One was the uh, intimacy of the department and the undergraduate classes. And uh, it was an opportunity not just to do research, but also to concentrate on the teaching of the undergraduates and the interaction with the undergraduates here. And most large research universities, that, that is hard to, to uh, accomplish at the same time. But likewise, the facilities here to do research are really quite excellent and so um, it was pretty much the best of both worlds and I thought uh, I could do uh, everything I wanted to do here at Colorado State. Generally the research I'm involved in uh, in a broad terms would be considered polymer science and particularly we're interested in making new materials um, with new capabilities and uh, we go about that by actually trying to control the chemistry of the polymers that we synthesize down at a molecular level. And so in many ways, we approach our science much like a chemist, but at the same time, we're interested not just in making the materials, but in the way they behave or their ultimate properties. And so in that respect, we're much like an engineer, or we approach things like an engineer. So the research we do is very interdisciplinary, and as a result, um, we're trying to build a research group that consists of both engineers, chemical engineers, but also chemists and material scientists, and those who are interested in biological aspects of those materials as well. Um, most of the projects in my group, uh, we work with a specific class of polymeric materials known as blockopolymers, and these are unique materials because they um, spontaneously self-assemble into a sort of fantastic array of structures that have features that are on the nanometer length scale, so anywhere from 5 to 100 nanometers. And it turns out these are, are it's an important characteristic because um, they give us two things. One is uh, very controlled pore sizes or uh, extremely high surface areas. And so exploiting those, we can introduce these materials into a number of applications where, for which those, those traits are important. The main focus of, of our group right now, or many of the students in my group, are based on incorporating these blockopolymers into environmentally sensitive hydrogels. And so uh, if we had a hydrogel uh, here in front of us, it would look very polymeric, it'd be sort of elastic in nature, but it has a large affinity to absorb water. And our group is trying to incorporate, by using chemistry, the ability of these materials to respond in some way to an external stimulus. Okay? So by that I mean light or a pH or temperature or a magnetic field or an electric field. And so some of the responses you might imagine uh, that we're trying to incorporate are such that if we at a particular wavelength of light, we get a sudden contraction of the material or an expansion, or the material likes to bend or change shape. And so, um, in many ways, uh, these materials could behave like artificial muscles. And say, we don't apply an electrical signal per se, but with this external stimulus, we use a contraction and expansion, much, much like a muscle. And then uh, from that muscle, we can then extract work. Okay. Um, we also think these hydrogels have a large potential uh, to be uh, very useful in drug delivery applications. We think we can control parts of the hydrogel to uh, erode or degrade at certain rates or maybe swell such that they can release a drug with a particular release profile uh, or multiple drugs with very different release profiles. And so we have projects involved in drug delivery as well with these hydrogels. Because of the interdisciplinary nature of, of all the research we do, we start from the you know from a beaker making the materials all the way to a full characterization of its behavior and properties. Students in my group really get exposed to a number of types of science as well as instrumentation and use of that instrumentation. And so um, there are a number of places that people in my area would go to work. Corporate research labs such as 3M or Dow or DuPont, Exxon, Medtronic, medical device companies, it's a huge breadth and range and really it comes down to the understanding of the polymer materials, how to make them as well as how they behave, how to go back in and change their structure to get a new behavior out of the material. Graduate students in my group I think come in, they, they have a project and, and I like to let them 
uh, loose to explore and, and really investigate the aspects of the project that they really are interested in. Undergraduates are particularly important in our group. Uh, right now we have three undergraduates uh, working and we're looking to expand that. They're a critical part of our group, I think, and, and they do research projects right along beside the graduate students as well. So they actually have their own projects and, and can do some really exciting research and, and go to conferences and uh, write papers and manuscripts and, and, and be a, a legitimate member of our research group.